So guys, we are at 4160 Dundas Street West in Toronto today. Um, this is right around the border of Toronto and Mississauga, if you know the area. And um, this is where the infamous um, antique shop, I forgot the guy's name. What's the guy's name again? Uh, Anthony's Antiques um, in the episode Cuckoo Clock of Doom in Goosebumps, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, now, when um, when Michael was running down the block towards the shop in the episode, I'm not sure. I caught both directions. Uh, if somebody knows, then tell me. But whichever direction, like coming up the street, I got both of them. I'm not sure which angle they took it from. If it was, you know, coming towards it going one way or coming the other way. But you can see there I put both. So if somebody knows, comment down and let me know which direction it was. But um, as far as the shop, so guys, the shop has actually been knocked down, that location. 4160. So there's 4158, I believe, on the right side, to the right of it. And then, which is, um, I think it's a gym actually i think it's a, a little gym or something like that and then there's like a little yoga place which doesn't even seem like it's even open on the left side at, at uh 62 41 62 so yeah you know it's a place of history i guess the goosebumps has some history because that building actually is knocked down so um yeah i didn't get to talk to anyone i just kind of showed up realized it was knocked down and that's it so yeah that's pretty much it. Enjoy the episode. First and foremost, I do like this episode, but I just got to say a lot of the acting was just downright goofy. Like, come on, man. Anyway, Cuckoo Clock of Doom is a unique episode in the series because it's actually one of the more least discussed ones in the fandom. A big reason I'm confident of why is the fact that it's the only episode out of the entire series to not be released on home media. Even though Werewolf Skin and the original Haunted Mask never got DVD releases, they had their own respective VHS tape prints during the time. Nowadays, it's on Netflix and can easily be watched there. But in the 90s and 2000s, unless you caught it on TV, it was easy to be forgotten. Speaking for myself, me and my sister used to rent Trilogy, Shocker and Shock Street, and Night of the Living Dummy 3 a lot from the library. So we had a lot of nostalgia for those ones and others probably borrowed other episodes. But unfortunately, this one, Cuckoo Clock of Doom, had nothing to live on through. But yeah, that's my take on it. I love how Goosebumps never fails to remind you that this is a children's horror, cause an adult wouldn't be crazy enough to immerse themselves into a show after seeing this scene. Well, probably any adult besides me, that is. Only a child would put their fingers into a random spill of what seems to be blood like it's nothing. Anyway, my man Michael has been going through it with his disrespectful and manipulative little sister. She's always messing with him and then getting him in trouble afterwards when he retaliates. Comment down below if you grew up with a younger sibling who caused you the same grief. So one day, his pops brings home... A clock. An ugly clock. ...from Anthony's antique store. And the family's kind of wondering, like, what's the point of this? The backstory behind this is... A strange old man built the clock over a hundred years ago, and he put a magical spell on it. But they say, whoever discovers the magic must beware. Whoa! Oh! Now the kids are instructed, and I quote, not to lay a, a finger, finger on this, on this clock. clock. And they claim that they comprehended the words he just spoke out of his lips. But just like when I was a preteen, words did not work. I had to learn things the hard way. So young Michael, of course, goes down while everyone's asleep and starts fiddling with the clock to try to frame his sister. The next morning... <laughs> Dad, how's the clock? What's going on? My birthday was three days ago. All right, real funny joke. Michael, will you tell me what you want for breakfast? Because your friends are going to be here soon, and I still have to pick up the cake. All right, guys, the joke's over. What joke? Deja vu? Bet you didn't see that one coming, buddy. Of course, he tries to tell his parents what's going on, but come on, man, this is goosebumps. The number one recurring theme here is that no one, usually the adults, ever believed these kids. As Mike ends up deeper and deeper in the time warp, 
Things only get worse and worse until now he's six years old and his evil sister no longer exists. And what's worse, it's six years ago. There is no clock anymore in the living room. But I mean, look at the bright side, Michael. You got the greatest opportunity in the universe. You get the benefit of starting life all over again and can correct your mistakes. Well, that or you end up so far back in time you never existed. But I mean, life's a bitch anyways. You're still lucky. Cheer up, kid. Six-year-old Michael flies down to the antique shop where the clock is and guess who follows him there? So now father drags him all the way back to the crib and later father time drags him all the way back to the crib. <laughs> How does this wrap up? Coincidentally, the parents just magically get the idea in the hike of this crucial life or death moment to go browse the very antique shop where the clock that will save this kid's existence just so happens to be. It's funny, right? Don't you just love writing that's geared towards an elementary level mind? Anyways, when they get to the shop, Michael hits the baby Olympics and... How many times have I told you to stay away from this clock? You're 12 years old, act like it. Happy ending, right? Nah, there's a bit of a twist at the end, but you be the judge. That's pretty much it.